Brady, you were out there at Mandatory Minicamp. Now, you go out to um, all the Seahawks open practices. You covered this team very closely as a, as a beat writer for ESPN. Um, but we wanted to get some of your takeaways from the most recent open sessions. So I've got some um, Pete sound about specific guys, but I'm going to start with just some general questions. Um, the first being uh, which player or position group just stood out the most that you found yourself watching the most? My biggest takeaway, and really this is not just specific to the three mini camp practices last week. It's really the OTAs that we were able to see as well in the couple of weeks before that. But the biggest takeaway for me is that this is the most talented and deepest secondary mm -hmm. that they've had since the Legion of Boob days, since you know 2017 when that started to unravel because of injuries and all that. I just haven't seen them either have this much top end talent or this much this, this much depth. And we talked about Mike Jackson earlier. I mean, Mike Jackson was a guy who seemed like he was relegated to a backup role when they spent the fifth overall pick on Devin Witherspoon. And now he was, as Pete Carroll said, and what my eyes told me was the best player uh, of the six practices yeah. that, that we saw. And so that just gives you an idea of how much depth they've got, not only at cornerback, but just at safety as well. Um, you know, Trey Brown is another guy who had, I know he missed a little bit of time, uh, I think in one of the practices that we saw with a hamstring injury, uh, but he had a good camp according to Pete Carroll as well. And that was a guy who I know he, you know, was coming back from the injury last year and you didn't see a whole lot of him, but two years ago, you would have thought that that's a, a very much an on the rise player when he stepped in as a rookie before he got hurt that season. Um, and that's to say nothing of the guy that you spent the fifth overall pick on Devin Witherspoon, uh, the other guy, Tariq Woolen who was coming off a Pro Bowl rookie season. Mm -hmm. So that secondary, uh, especially at cornerback, has all sorts of depth. Um, and But even with that said, with as much promise as that group has, there's still a ton of unanswered questions. What are some of those questions? To be sorted out there. Well, I think the first one is who's going to play Nickelback. Um, and they did give Devin Witherspoon a look there uh, during minicamp, and that creates, I think, a really interesting possibility of and, – and we're probably putting the cart – before the horse here because there's you know um, two months uh, to sort this out still but the possibility there is okay you have Tariq Woolen and Devin Witherspoon starting on the outside obviously uh, Woolen is going to be back by training camp that's been the consistent word coming off the arthroscopic knee surgery and you know just know that Devin Witherspoon is going to be starting yeah. there they didn't draft him that high to, to have him be a part-time player as a rookie so I think the possibility is those two guys starting on the outside and then Instead of, you know, the traditional nickelback who just comes in uh, and plays nickel in those situations, I think what they could do if they if they really like what they see from Devin Witherspoon in the slot is maybe they move him inside in those situations, bring Mike Jackson mm. uh, back out on the left side. Uh, and you sort of do kind of something similar that they did a few years ago with, I think, Shaquille Griffin and Jeremy Lane. Uh, so that's just one interesting possibility. Uh, but I think the nickel job is just – it's it's open. I mean, I don't know. I, th I think that uh, Kobe Bryant had a pretty nice rookie season, but it wasn't it wasn't like Tariq Wollin's rookie season where, OK, he's entrenched as a starter. Yep. I think that job is still open for competition. You got a number of different options there. I mean, Julian Love has done some of that in the past as well. Um, so the nickel situation is one unanswered question. And the other one is just when is Jamal Adams going to be back? And not only when is he going to be back, but when is he going to be back to being Jamal Adams? And I think it's an interesting distinction there. And, you know, we talked to Quandre Diggs a week or so ago and somebody, I think it was Michael Sean Dugar asked him, you know, when was it last year that he really felt like himself? And he said it wasn't until midseason. Remember, he was coming off the, uh, the broken ankle that he yeah. suffered in the final game of the 2021 season. So he was, I think, back by the start of training camp. Uh, but he even said, you know, it wasn't until midseason where he felt like he could really cut on that ankle and play the way that he likes to play. And you and, saw improvement from him midseason. Like, right. you started to see him get those interceptions yeah, there. And, yeah, and there was plays early in the season, some missed tackles there where you just have to wonder if you know, he is such a physical guy, such a good tackle normally, that you just wonder if he just didn't really – he was obviously there. He was there in week one. But I think that the lesson there is that, you know – these guys can come back and it's you just can't expect them to come back after that long a layoff after the injury and all the physical and psychological you know issues that come with that you just can't expect them to be their best versions right when they come back and so that i think that that you should apply that thinking to both jordan brooks and jamal adams and um i i don't think jordan brooks is going to be there by week one that's just my guess based on 
all the different ACL injuries that we've seen and the timing of that. He was hurt on January 1st, so that's just going to be really hard for him to get back. Adams, I don't, I just don't know what to think about that because that's an injury that is seemingly a lot less common than your typical ACL or Achilles injury, and there's just not as much data on how long that injury typically takes. It's a torn quad tendon uh, that required surgery, and so there's a question of when he's going to be back and also when is he going to be the Jamal Adams that you saw a couple years ago. So I-